Hi, in this video, we are going to be creating and saving background light effects in Adobe Photoshop that we can always use for our plain background images. This is Twisted Creative. I'll let you bring my name. So, first time on this channel, please do me a favor. Do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Not only by hitting that subscribe button, also ring that notification bell so that I don't miss any of the next video. If there's anything you like about this video, please don't forget to hit that like button and also drop a comment down. Without wasting much time, let's get into it. We'll be applying the effect we are going to create to this image and this image to see how they are going to be looking on these images. We are not going to create it on the image, but we are going to create it separately and save it, then bring it to these images and see how they are going to be looking on the images. So right now we are going to be using our control N for new documents. To make sure we are on inches, then our width should be five inches, then our height should be five inches then the resolution should be 600 we can choose black background for our background then hit create then we have this now let's remove some of this thing because we don't need them that much we have to create an empty layer by clicking on this plus mark here to create an empty layer then we have the empty layer as layer one here we have to pick our elliptical marker tool then hold our shift to drag for a circle then we right click inside and choose fill then we can choose white as the content for the mode normal opacity 100 then make sure this is not checked and hit ok we have white circle here we are going to pick our move to take this ruler in case you don't have this line on your screen you can see where the ruler is placed here you can just drag on the ruler you have a line from the ruler then you can bring the horizontal one from the top you can drag it down like this you have a line let's remove them because you don't have use for them let's remove this and take this back you can always get it from this end but if you are not seeing this ruler you can use ctrl arrow to hide it then ctrl arrow to reveal it we have to unlock the background we have the center of the document here we have to bring the line to the middle we can also bring this vertical line to the middle we can zoom in and see if it is accurate then i think it's okay like this we have the middle of our project here then we can, we can pick this circle and place it on the middle. While trying to place it, you will notice that this area will turn into purple, which is, it has been in line. If you check like this, it has been in line with the top one, but not the horizontal one. Then if you place it like this, you have vertical OK and horizontal OK. That is why you are seeing this pink around, this pink or purple color around it. So we are OK at the middle there. Next thing we do is for us to use our control J to duplicate that circle. So we we'll have two circles. We can increase this main circle by holding Alt to drag it up. It's going to follow that anchor point to increase or reduce. Then we we'll hit OK. We can pick this other one and reduce the size. Reduce the size. So we can place this guy here now. We we'll have to align it with the vertical line, which you are practically seeing that we have it like purplish line there so that means it has aligned with the vertical line we are going to leave it here then let's reduce the size of the circle by holding our alt and drag it it is going to maintain the anchor point then drag it to a particular level like this i think it should be okay like we can zoom in a bit then let's work like this let's say we select this now we are going to create circles around this big circle how are we going to go about it? We are going to be creating a line to detect the next spot this circle is going to be falling. We have to go to our rectangular marker tool and drag a line. Then use make sure the layer O is selected because we are going to copy from layer O. Then we are going to use our Ctrl C to copy, then Ctrl V to paste. Based on the fact that we are having black on black, so it's not visible, we are going to bring it out by using our Ctrl L. We are going to shift this output layer slider. We're going to move it rightward to brighten the copy of that background then hit ok then we have to pick our move to we can increase the height by holding our shift and drag it up then holding our shift and drag it down also you can see bring it down increase the length then we can zoom in very well and reduce the width then hit ok so with this now we'll be able to rotate this line and place it accurately on the area we want it to be so let's rotate it like this and hit ok then we can move this line so we want it to be at the edge of this square so we are going to be removing the lines that we are not using so that it's not going to confuse us let's remove this and remove this to the top so we have just this then i believe this is okay 
we can say the next stuff in between is going to be dropping here. We are going to select the small circle. Activate your free transform, then pick your anchor points and drop it in the middle of the project. Then with your rotation mode, you can drag this circle to the next spot. Make sure you align it with that line. The move that we made now has been recorded. We are going to hold down our shift, control, and alt. We are going to be pushing our T to the number of the circle we need. You have to be pressing it and it's going to be jumping to the next spot and to the next spot. Then we'll have it here. We started from layer 1 copy. We are going to select this layer 1 copy. Then hold our shift down and click on layer 8. Then we'll have all of them selected. We have to use our control E to merge these layers. So we we'll have these layers like this. If you take a look at them, they are together now. Then let's take our control Z to rebalance it to the position. Then we we'll have them like this now. We are going to duplicate them to make more of these circles. So we are going to use our control J to duplicate them. So we we'll have this and this. If you take a look now, we can move this around. You can see we we'll have extra one of it. Then let's use our control Z to rebalance it. You can rotate this now. We can rotate this and place it right in the middle so that we we'll have more of those circles. Then we can hit OK. Look at what we have here. Take this layer 1 copy 9 and layer 1 copy 8. Take two of them and use Ctrl E to merge two of them. This is how it is now. Then if you use Ctrl Z, you are back to the normal position. We can use our Ctrl J to duplicate them more. We are going to be holding our Alt and drag it to increase the size. Let's leave it here. We are going to hit OK now. Then use our Ctrl J to duplicate it again and increase the size again by holding our Alt down and increase the size. So this is what we have now. We can see that some, some of these things are going out. Then we have to select all of them. Select the first one. You hold your shift to select the last one. Then we have all of them selected. Then you can hold your alt to drag it down so that it's going to maintain the anchor points. Then you can hit OK. So this is what we have. Now there's something we don't need which is this line that we try to use to discover the next spot. We have to remove the line by deleting. Then we have this stuff like this. So we have to select the first one and the last one. Then use our control E to merge them. Now we have this stuff like this. Isn't that amazing? We are going to be saving this stuff trans as transparent stuff now. We no longer need this background. We are going to delete this background. Then we are going to save like this be able to pick this stuff like this and take it to the image that we are going to be working on here we have it isn't that amazing already how can we make use of this thing on this our image let's rename it as lights make sure the light is selected then go to filter blur then gaussian blur you can blur it to your preference like uh, i think like so let's see 16 is okay, then hit okay. Then go to your blend mode and choose overlay. You can duplicate to increase the intensity of the light depending on the background you are working with. But you can always reduce the light by using your opacity to reduce. I hope you are getting something there. Okay, then the next thing we are going to be doing, we are going to direct the light so that it's going to fall as something that is falling from one direction or the other. So what we are going to be doing is to hold our control down and pin to the edge, then we can reduce the angle here then reduce the angle here or we can take it up so that it can it will be appearing like something that is coming from the top side i think like this should be okay let's make it appear at the top also so we can put it this way By distorting it like this, it's okay. Then we can hit OK. Then go to your image, pick your object selection tool, and you can always drag around like this. Then you have the image selected. But if you want to make accurate selection, we can still go and correct some part of this image by selecting like this. You can always check where the effect is visible and correct it. 
I think we are okay like this. We are not doing anything to the image but the effects. We are going to select the light effect. We're going to right click on the image and feather with two. Hit OK. Then we are going to delete like once or twice. So we have it like this. Then we have to use our control D to deselect. So which we have like this. Let's see the before and after. This is before. This is after. Isn't that amazing? Then if you want this light to be brighter than what we are seeing now, what I'm going to do, use our control J to duplicate it. So we have a more shiny light. So I don't know how you are going to be seeing it. We can also put both of them in a group by selecting this and holding your control or shift to select the last one and use control G to place them in a group. So this is before and this is after. So let's try it on the next image and see how it's going to look. Then we'll go to the file again and click our move to. Then we're going to drag this to the next file and next image and let's increase the size to fit the image. So mind you, mind you, it's not for the floor. So you are not going to let it be on the floor. But if you are going to try out something, I think it's fine. You can try and see if it's going to fit the floor. But for now, we are using it for the back backdrop. So this is what we we'll do. Like, let's make this other one come from this direction. We can hold our control down and drag towards this direction. Then bring it like this. We can also increase like this to show the direction of the light. Okay. Let's hit OK. Then we'll have it this way. We can go to filter and blur more this time. We are going to increase the level of our blur to let's say 30. Let's say 30. Hit OK. So I think this blur is high. Let's see how it's going to be looking. Like the other one is not that high. Let's see how 30 is going to look. So from here now we are going to choose our blend mode and go to overlay. I can see it's looking beautiful already. Then the next thing we do is select the image, go to this image and pick our object selection tool and drag around the image and boom, it has been selected. If you check, you notice that the design, the light effect has fallen into this position. So that is why we are going to remove this from selection. So we have it corrected like this. Now we can right click and feather with two. We are not going to be deleting from the image. We are going to be selecting the effect and push our delete. So we have the image cleaned up. Then we we'll use our control D to deselect. Then if you check it, this is what we have. This is before, this is after. This is before, this is after. Isn't that amazing already? Let's say we can reduce the opacity like this. If we don't want that much, but if you want it more than what we are seeing at 100%, you can always use your control J to duplicate it to make it shine more. So this is, if you put them in, in a group now, select the first one, hold your control down to select the second one, then use your control G to place them in a group. So this is before, this is after, this is before, this is after. In case you don't want it as harsh as this, you can go in there and disable one of them and you can equally reduce the opacity of this, then you have it like this. Then let's preview again and see the before. Let's click here. Let's hold our alt and click on this button and see the before and this is after. This is before and this is after. Isn't that amazing? So I believe that is it for today. If you find it interesting, helpful and useful, don't forget to hit that like button. You can always drop in the comment section telling us the area it has helped, the area it has not and the area we need to improve on. Like I said earlier, if you are new on this channel, please do me a favor. Do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Not only by hitting that subscribe button, also ring that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the next video. Thanks for watching today's video. Creative Pro, keep on creating. Please stay creative. See you in the next one. Bye.